ذكريات كثير كانت حلوة ساعة راحت حسيت إنه شيء راح مني. For the last few years, I've been following the lives of two children, and for me, they symbolise the suffering inflicted by Syria's war and its long-term consequences. First, I want you to meet Mustafa. He and his little sister Dua survived a bombing raid by the Syrian regime seven years ago when he was three. Both their parents were killed, and he still has shrapnel in his brain, which doctors say would be too dangerous to remove. I first met Mustafa when he was five. Over the years, the one thing that's never changed is his good nature and irrepressible smile. Right now, Mustafa has good reason to be happy. He and Dua and their grandmother are about to be given a new home on the other side of the world. شو إحساسك أنك رايح أستراليا؟ بعز الحياة أنا راح تكون حلوة. إن شاء الله. يعني بدي أتعالج وأصير نفس أصحابي. وإذا كنت أنت زي أصحابك كيف هتكون؟ إيش الفرق؟ راح أكون مبسوطة كتير كتير. يعني هم عندهم إيد يقدروا يعملوا فيها وعندهم الجن يقدروا يمشوا فيها أما أنا لا. It's time for last play with his cousins before he goes. As always, he's doing his best to keep up, but his injuries seem to affect him more than when I saw him last. His grandmother's looked after him for the past few years as if she was his own mum. But she's frail now and can barely walk. For her, it's not going to be an easy move. But in the final hours before their departure, when they're too excited about going to get to sleep, there's a last minute hitch. So they should actually be in the air right now, but when you're a refugee, you don't have much control over events and there's been some kind of delay. مرحبا مصطفى دوا كيفكم مرحبا مرحبا كيفك شو صار انا كنت فرحان ومزعجت بعدين the bureaucratic bungle means it'll be weeks at least before he can fly i'm on my way now to meet another family who've also suffered unimaginably over the past few years Rahaf was only a toddler when her home in Syria was hit by government shelling, setting her bedclothes on fire. Her older sister Amma's burns were more severe, and last year, shockingly, she died. Back in 2012, we filmed Amma having surgery on her face. She had so many operations over the years, so many skin grafts and medical procedures, her family literally lost count. But Rahaf can count the operations she's had, 12. One for every year of her life. Nothing she's been through can match the pain of losing her sister, who was also her best friend. I remember when I first met Rahaf and Amma nine years ago, they didn't want to look at themselves in the mirror. They were too scared to go outside because they were frightened of people's reactions to them. And then you can see from these photos what a self-confident young woman she'd become just before she got ill and died. This was the last photo taken of her before she got an infection last year that her body couldn't fight. <laughs> Rahaf's getting ready to visit her sister's grave. 
It wasn't a bullet or a bomb that killed Amma, but years of surgery for her injuries had clearly taken a massive toll on her body. Her family took her from doctor to doctor to try to save her. And after everything she'd been through and everything that she'd survived, they just can't believe that she's gone. Mustafa does still have the chance of a new life, unlike most Syrian refugees. But no one can bring his mum and dad back, and that small bit of shrapnel buried in his brain that causes him so much trouble will be with him wherever he goes. And these are the stories of just two of the thousands of children killed and injured in a decade of war. <laughs>